This is our iHeartRadio album release party with Cheap Trick celebrating the release of their brand new album, In Another World, which is available now. And we have some of our fans joining us on Zoom. And uh, we'd like to uh, hear from Carrie and John. Hi, Carrie and John. Hello. Hi, Rick. Hi, Robin. Hello. Uh, I had a quick question. I wanted to know, uh, where is your favorite place to play? I have liked Japan an awful lot, but uh, there's been a lot of places we've played all around the world. Uh, that's a special one, though. But you know, one of my favorite shows that we did was uh, in in Germany at uh, Zeppelinplatz, uh, Nuremberg, Germany, with the Who and uh, us and ACDC. AC I'll remember that for a while. 180,000 people or something like Unbelievable. that. Unbelievable. Yeah. That's amazing. And they liked us too. The party afterward was unbelievable. <laughs> it was Bon Scott days. Oh. If the room sounds good, I love it. And uh, next, we have Jude. Where's Jude? Hey, Hi, Jude. Jude. <laughs> hey, man, somebody man, wrote a song man. about you. Yeah. You haven't heard that, that in the last 20 minutes. It, it was it was it was a uh, it was a hard name to get through until uh, sixty eight. After that, it was a real good. It was a blessing. Yeah. Uh, but... uh, oh yeah, it was. It, it changed changed my life, much like my first show in seventy eight, watching you guys at the Palladiums when when the cars opened up. But my my question to you, Rick, is if you only had to have one, only one, all the rest were going to be gone. But if you only had one guitar that you were going to have to play for the rest of your time playing guitar, which one would it be? Um, I give a different answer every time. Um, well, I think my uh, checkerboard Hamer. Well, wow. The Explorer, because it's, it's, uh, really, it's, it's, it's really seasoned, and it's, uh, it's kind of beat up, sort of like me. <laughs> and it, but it, just, it plays well, and it was the first one they did for me as a custom. Where they had to put checkerboard square tape on there that's not an airbrush like they do it today it's it's was hand done so uh that's kind of my favorite and plus everybody knows it and it's not as heavy as any of those stupid five necks <laughs> <laughs> and, and uh rick how many how many guitars did you have in the museum um i only had about a hundred in there and uh some of them were donated uh, brian may and dave Grohl and uh brad Red Whitford and uh, Conan O'Brien and yeah, but it was the but it but it was the finest guitar museum in the world, right? Of yes. course. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Nielsen, yeah. are you kidding? I had <laughs> enough to fill five of those museums. <laughs> okay, Lauren. I mean, Ten museums. How are you, Lauren? I'm great. How are you? Okay, welcome. Thank you. Love you guys. Love your music. Very excited about your new album. How long will you tour, do you think? How long will you keep touring? However long we can stand up <laughs> and they'll let us go out and play. That's the thing right now. There's not many places yet that are open for us to play at. But it's a thrill to do it. And, and you know, it's like, I don't ever plan on retiring, do you? Yeah. What would I do? Yeah. Good, great, great. What Thank could you. I do? <laughs> All right, Lauren, I love you. I love you too. Thank All you. Right. And and you'll be heading off to uh, to Australia for a tour in just days, right? Yeah. Yep. yeah. Let's hear from Sandy. Hi, Sandy. Hi. Um, so my question is, what was the inspiration for Dream Police? I've always loved that song. What was the which? I'm sorry. Inspiration for Dream Police. Oh, the, the inspiration, inspiration for, for Dream. Well, the inspiration for Dream Police. Uh, I like the word combination for one and two. Uh, it was like before thinking about Big Brother in 1984, uh, not the commercial by Apple, but the actual 1984 where, you know, somebody there besides watching over you or watching you, they're, now they're into your dreams and your thoughts, the thought police. You know, it's like uh, Big Brother's watching you. Look at all the cameras all around the world now. What would each of you like your fans to come away with after experiencing in another world? I'll just uh, have a good time. And, uh, you know, we try to put a smile on everyone's face every time we make a record, you know, and I hope this did that, especially during these times. And uh, I've got to go, Jim. Uh, lovely to see you, but I've got a plane to catch, so i got to take off. Uh, Rick's going to have to finish up here for me. i got a plane to catch, okay. too. Today, today the record <laughs> comes out, and today 
We're flying to Australia. Okay, Hi, yeah, you, yeah, you're road warriors. See you, Robin. You're road warriors. What are your thoughts oh. going forward? Uh, I know you're playing uh, down under. You're leaving in just a few days for that. And you do have U.S. dates set for the summer. Uh, well, yeah, we have dates. Well, I think we're the first band for like an international band going over. Uh, it's, it's us and Stone Temple Pilots and Bush and the two other bands from Australia. Uh, we're opening up the live, playing live again. And to do this, we had to we had to get quarantined for two weeks after we get there, and we can't leave our hotel rooms. And and, and uh, it's a dedication to the we get to go out and play. And I think the audience is looking forward to seeing live music again. And we're definitely looking forward to playing. And we know you love to play because 400 you usually... and some days without playing, it's, it sucks. Yeah, and you usually do what 150 or so shows a year. Oh, at least. At least, Tracy. We used to do 300 a night or 300 a year, playing six and seven nights a uh, a week, and doing three and four sets a night. So we used to be really crazy. <laughs> okay, Tracy has a question. Hello. Hi, Tracy. Hey, how you doing, Rick? All right. Yeah, listen, man. First of all, thank you so much for the unbelievable music that you have given us through the years. It's been amazing. It really has. And the question I have, I'm going to go back to the John Lennon thing. Um, meeting him and his format and what he has done with his music, when you jammed with him on I'm Losing You, can you put in a little detail of how it felt and how, can you give us a little bit more into it? Well, I treated it like uh, it was musician to musician, guy to guy. You know, uh, when I was there, I called him John. And I, <laughs> and uh, when he walked in the studio and saw me, he goes, it's you, it's you, you know. <laughs> so he knew who I was, but he, I think he said, I, he thought I was Ricky Nelson, <laughs> but since it wasn't. And um, when I was doing the guitar bits in there, because I really heavied it up, uh, he said to Bunny and, and to Jack and to Yoko, he says, I wish I would have had Rick on uh, cold turkey. He says, Clapton crows. <laughs> what a compliment, you know, it's like, <laughs> And, uh, you know, we talked about guitars, too. I mean, I gave him a guitar, which I got back after he was murdered three years later. And mm -hmm. I also had a guitar built for him because I, I loved his, his playing. I loved his uh, songwriting. I loved his voice. And I didn't love him as much as Yoko did, but it was like, <laughs> but it was uh, pretty cool. And that was the day that I, actually our drummer, Dax, was born, wow. August 12, 1980. That is so, cool. Uh, I wasn't in the hospital for him being uh, born so but uh, he gave me a hall pass because it was it was john lennon <laughs> that is so cool thank you so much for sharing that with me guy. i appreciate all right. it so much I like your voice Tracy. you guys are the best all right and and frank you have a question first of all this is so damn cool i gotta admit but my question is about the 12 string bass guitar the bass bass uh, what was the your your the the, the song that made him invent the guitar the 12 string bass when well, Tom Pedersen invented it. What, what, what made him do it? Well, uh, we, you know, we're a three-piece, guitar, bass, drums, and, and a great lead vocalist. So we tried to build our sound, and he, he tried a Hagstrom eight-string bass, and that sounded pretty crappy. And uh, so he decided to uh, have the Hamer Company build him something, and so he thought a 12-string. Three E's, three D's, three A's, and... Uh, Somebody that I know said, it sounds like the 12 string bass, it sounds like a, a chair being thrown into a grand piano. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> nice. Rick, when are you guys coming back? I got one of these pics when you were here in uh, 2017 at Jones Beach. See the oh, pic? well, oh, next time awesome I'll throw it in the water man. and dive in for it. Yeah, you were right there. We were like third row, my wife and I. It was an awesome show. Well, your wife's awesome too. Yeah, she, she's the real fan, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Well, if she's the real fan, we know what a big fan Frank is, and he's <laughs> got that pick there. And uh, actually, I remember the first time I, I got a cheap trick pick. <laughs> I mean, it, I believe that you buy them by the tens of thousands. You know, people love them. They're such a, a wonderful keepsake uh, after attending a cheap trick show. Uh, we have uh, Terry... Uh, with a final question. Hi, Terry. 
Um, I'm from Wisconsin. I was a fan of yours before you were famous. We used to see you like play in all these dive bars like Hump and Hannah's and all that. My question is, is there one bar before you became famous that you would love to play at again or that sticks in your mind as, you know, like a great memory? Uh, yeah, so I know the clubs in Wisconsin were always great to us. We played a lot in Madison. We played uh, a lot in Milwaukee. We played... Uh, we played it, you know. We played a lot of places that uh, we played the Republican House in uh, wow. some place, Wisconsin. It was like it was crazy, but uh, I think we were a little um, overserved. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Did you like that video? You can check out more over here. And don't forget to subscribe to iHeart right here. And if you're already a longtime fan, make sure you ring the bell down below so you don't miss a single video. Bye guys.